Do you think I will get along with your friends? You can't attack people. But you come off harsh sometimes. Family Maybe oriented. Maybe they should send family. naked pictures to you. Then I will be polite. You don't speak no more. Great dinner. I'll take off. Natalie went and ruined Mike's birthday. Let me not say it like that. That's a bit harsh. She ruined the birthday dinner she threw for Mike. Are you really leaving now? Yes, I'm leaving. Here you go. Have a good night. Meanwhile, Mike took the party to the house. I'm gonna go home and uh, have some drinks, take some shots, make the best of it. When he says home, he's talking about this house. Three hours away in Squim. He's leaving Natalie at the hotel in Seattle, which I can't help but wonder, I mean, is he gonna come back and get her? How is that gonna work? Uh, Sounds like a waste of a trip. I don't understand. Well, besides that, one thing is clear. Mike's at a point in his relationship where his patience is running thin. So thin that he is looking for a reason to leave. And if you've been there before, you know what I mean. Plus, I really am left doing everything on my own. On your own. Tiffany went to a lawyer to talk about divorcing Ronald. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, I know, it's, it's hard. And based off her reasoning, it sounds like that might be the best idea. Sometimes I worry that I'm stuck in this marriage versus I'm in this marriage because I'm happy. Oof, that's deep. We're gonna talk about it. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. Let's go ahead and jump right into Mike and Natalie and this naked picture conversation that got him so upset that he left his own birthday dinner. All right, starting from the top, Natalie found herself being romantic as she put together a thoughtful celebration for Mike during their trip to Seattle. Love. Yes. Can I please ask you to go downstairs? Yeah, on my way. Today is the uh, 36th birthday of my husband, and since we are in Seattle, I thought it's gonna be nice time to celebrate with him. I want his day to be extra special because ever since I bought the ring, he's been acting really good. She's just happy to see that ring on his finger because I doubt that this $3 ring she bought him last episode from the crystal shop is having any effect on his behavior. Whoa, what do we got here, baby? Fast forward, Mike comes downstairs and he is impressed. What a surprise. Natalie secretly ordered his favorite sushi and grabbed a bottle of champagne. You like? It's beautiful, baby. Oh my God. I was hungry. <laughs> your favorite sushi, so yeah. It's all for your best, day, love. What's wine? It's champagne. I was getting so hungry, I had no idea she put this together. It was awesome, baby. Thank you so much. Natalie was like, yep, yeah, I did that. <laughs> okay, let's do a toast for you. She went on to give Mike a birthday toast, and during it, she admitted to being a lot to deal with. And I'm your lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> your pain in the butt. <laughs> pain in the butt, yes. But she also expressed her love for him, which felt real. So real that Mike ended it with an amen. <laughs> I love you. Amen. And we know his beliefs. I do not believe in religion, mm -hmm. like in a God. I love you. Amen. Thank you so much for this wonderful night ahead of us. Ahead of us? He spoke too soon. If only he knew what was ahead. So are you excited to go to your mama? Yes. After the toast, the two started talking about Thanksgiving, which was around the corner. And Natalie mentioned that she was nervous to go to Mike's mom's house. She's not that bad, you know? Yeah, she's strong, smart woman. She's also the woman who asked Mike's friend Tamara to call off their wedding. I asked her if she would, yes. And Natalie is not letting that go. But how can I just forgive you for that? But the talk around Mike's mom isn't what took the conversation south. Things started to take a turn when Natalie told Mike that she was bored and they needed more date nights. Because I'm dying from being bored. She then suggested that they take a trip to Nevada. Or you can play your boarding like in snowboard. Where some of Mike's friends live. Now, at first I thought taking a trip to Nevada was an innocent idea. But when I looked back over the episode and I considered how everything ended, Natalie knew what she was doing by bringing up this trip. She was digging for something. Do you think I will get along with your friends? I don't know, that uh, depends uh, 
On you, I guess. Why? Because, um... You sometimes come off a little harsh. I, I mean, they have to give me a credit. I'm from another country, honestly. You still gotta be nice to them. You can't, you can't attack people. But you come off harsh sometimes. I mean, everyone's like family Maybe oriented. Maybe they shouldn't send family. naked pictures to you. Then I will be polite. Look, Natalie knew she messed up. Look at her eyes right here. I've had that face before. Mm-hmm, I know it. It's that moment where you go too far and you see your partner is about to get mad for real. And you're like, oh, my bad, my bad. I will not do any more jokes like that. All right, Natalie, uh-huh. You don't speak no more. Great dinner. I'll take off. Mike really took the rest of his champagne to the head and left. And he didn't just leave her at the table, he left her in Seattle. <laughs> well, at least that's what it looks like. And so did somebody send him an mm -hmm. Who was that? Uh, a girl from Nevada. He said she's his friend, but uh, she kept sending him her boobs. Are you really leaving now? Yes, I'm leaving. Here you go. Have a good night. Uh, what is the reason uh, to stand up and leave if you have nothing to hide? Mike, what are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm gonna go home. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. It's obviously not gonna get any better for my birthday, so I'm gonna go home and uh, have some drinks, take some shots, make the best of it. So while things were going good, which Natalie said they were, he's been acting really good she decided to be sneaky and start an entire conversation around what she really wanted to get at, which was a naked picture. Now ask him, could they please not send you naked pictures? Hmm. Like I said, I've been there before, but I've learned there is a time and a place for everything. And what can really tick somebody off is you beating around the bush when you can just be straight up about it. Now, on the flip side, it is kind of strange that Mike got so upset to where he's about to drive three hours home on the night of his birthday. That's a bit extreme. He's either really at his breaking point with Natalie or he's not as innocent as we think because that hit a nerve. I guess we'll find out when we get more clarity on exactly what went down with this picture. All right, let's move on to Tiffany who went to a lawyer in Maryland to get some advice about divorcing her husband, Ronald, who lives in South Africa. But before we get into that, I have a quick side note. Tiffany's story about how she had her first child is wild. It is wild. For those of you who don't know, let me break it down. When I had Daniel, I was 18 years old. This is her son, Daniel. He's adorable, such a cute kid. Fun fact, she didn't know she was pregnant with him until 10 minutes before she gave birth. And I was 18. I was a lot skinnier and I had no belly at all. And every month I got my period. So I wasn't even thinking that could be an option, but um, yeah, I got to the hospital and one thing led to another and then I was having a baby. Uh -uh. So she's basically saying the dot can lie. Wow. The dot can lie. I have never heard anything like that before. Daniel is a blessed child. Okay. Back to the divorce talk. Ronald and Tiffany have somewhat had issues from the very beginning. After dating for six months, Ronald popped the question, but two weeks later, Tiffany found out that he had a gambling addiction. And a criminal past. To be his fiance and not know that about him is scary. You know, because you see this person as such an important part of your life, yet there's so much more to that person that you don't know about. Whew, hiding something like that is red flag number one. But hey, I guess we've all missed or ignored a red flag before. At this point, it seems like Ronald's got a grip on the addiction and they share a one-year-old daughter named Carly together. But now red flags two, three, four, five, and six are just flying all over the place because Tiffany revealed that Ronald has not been supporting his daughter. COVID has really put my marriage through the ringer. 
The last time Ronald and I were physically together was eight months ago. Ronald right now is not emotionally supportive. He's not financially supportive. Not once does Ronald offer, hey, let me buy diapers for Carly. Hey, let me send her some clothes, or let me send you money for clothes. Nothing. And that's so frustrating because it's not only my responsibility. I didn't make this baby alone. First of all, shout out to all of the moms out there who are unfortunately doing it alone or who have had to do it alone, but you made it happen or you are making it happen. I know it may not feel like it sometimes, but trust and believe your efforts are not in vain. As Tiffany started to discuss her situation with the lawyer, she got emotional at certain points. I'm handling a lot on my own. <laughs> but it seems like everything boiled down to the fact that if the spousal visa they applied for, which will allow Ronald to come to the States, goes through, Tiffany thinks that this situation, which is already bad, will get even worse. Dealing with it in two separate countries is hard. What if he's the same way when he's here? Yeah. Then I'm just gonna have to be miserable every day, feel so like unaccepted. Yeah. Because she's still on the fence about divorce and Ronald has no clue that this is even a conversation, the lawyer ended up giving her some really sound advice. At the end of the day, what you really need to figure out is, am I better off with him or am I better off without him? You'll know when when it's time because to get to the point where you say I'm better off without him, then you'll 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 be ready to go through the process. They say when you know you know. I guess that goes for divorce too. All right. Well, next week, based off of the preview, Tiffany is inching her way closer and closer to that moment of clarity. In my mind, all I can imagine right now is Ronald's coming to America, and it's all gonna be on me. I honestly think that she can be her best happy by herself. Not really with Ronald. Mm. All right, 90 Day fans fam, to make sure you stay updated on all the latest news coming out the 90 Day universe, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.